Sweden. Uh, hello, Bill. Big fan. I just bought your tickets to the show in Sweden. I just want you to promise me something. Don't hold back on the proud feminist socialist Swedes. Keep on trucking. Um, come to my, come to my house. We'll have a party. I'll never forget that. The creepiest heckle I ever got. Come to my house. We'll have a party. <laughs> I was asking them, what is there to do here in Sweden? And, you know, that's that's what came back. Come to my house. We'll have a party. It's like, will I be wearing a gimp suit? Um, don't hold back on the proud feminist socialist Swedes. Socialistic Swedes. Uh I won't, but I like you guys. I mean, I don't know. I have like a different viewpoint of feminism than actual feminists do. I think like active feminists, when they're running their yaps, they just sound like dumb guys with, but they have vaginas. It's like you sound like the exact same power hungry fucking lunatics who pretend that they give a shit about the the people beneath them, but you don't. Um, that's what you are. That'd be a tough pill for a lot of them to swallow. You know, no pun intended. That was not a pro-choice statement. It was just an expression I was using. That if they realized that at the end of the day, they were Donald Trump with a vagina. (laughs) Just as arrogant, just as stupid, just as unqualified. Um, But... Say what you want about Donald Trump. He has his faculties as opposed to like, dude, why, can they just put Joe Biden on a fucking porch somewhere and just let the guy enjoy the last couple months of his life? Like, what are we doing with this guy? I mean, it is fucking unbelievable. Like, I, I truly do believe that the media is liberal. Like the, the level that they're letting this guy get away with, like just, you know, stopping in the middle of speeches. I mean, I can't even fucking watch it. Um, I think all of us as Americans, we really owe it to both sides, to our side. What, why, why there's sides, I don't know why. We owe it to humanity to pick somebody qualified. All right? We... we One side had their fucking idiot. The other side had their fucking idiot. Like, let's just go back to somebody that can deliver a fucking speech. Would be nice. You know what I mean? Um, It won't happen. All right. Birthday, Barry, and Root Beer. Billy, birthday boy. We almost share a birthday. I I turned 29 on June 9th. Happy birthday. Mildly funny story because my head crowned because uh, because my head crowned on June 8th at 11.59 p.m. and the birthing process finished past midnight on June 9th, my mom got to choose either date for my birthday. She chose June 9th because it meant insurance covered an extra day in the hospital. Smart lady. I like that. Work in the system. Anyway, he writes, your cameo in Barry. As the pod coast host saying murder, murder is definitely not a sin. Crack me the fuck up. I'm so glad people like that because I had no idea what they were going to do with it. I just went down and did the voiceover. Obviously, I'd not seen the episode, but the uh, people that were directing me sent me in the right direction. But that was definitely one of those ones I was walking out going like, I hope that works. But then I was like, well, it's Bill Hader. He's a fucking genius. So even if I fuck this up, he'll either make it work or just not use it. So I felt that was in good hands. So thank you for the people that watched it and sent me um, the compliments. Uh, But it should go to Bill Hader and his writing staff because I just said what they wrote. Okay, here we go. It's funny to think that in, in an alternate universe, you might be a deadly hockey enforcer and a religious nut and still a successful podcast host. Yeah, but I mean, I would have to have played in like the 19 teens to actually be an enforcer with my size, my middleweight size. Uh, Lastly, for three years during high school, 
I worked at an A&W in Detroit. Ugh. If I see one of those on the road because they're, they're barely there anymore, I, I literally have to stop and get something. It's my favorite burger stand in the world because they didn't have them on the East Coast. Or whenever I would go out to like the Midwest or something. I don't even know when I started seeing them. Maybe when I started doing the road. I couldn't believe it. I was like, A&W has their own burger stand? This is like, because most places don't even carry root beer. It was fucking amazing. Anyway, while I myself may not be a root beer nut, I absolutely love the root beer flavored soft serve ice cream at A&W. Seriously, that shit rocks. Treat yourself a little for your for our birthday. Much love to you and your family, and thanks for all the laughs, you red son of a bitch. Uh, go fuck yourself. Uh, all right, thank you. Um, all right, catch 22. All right, catch 22. Dear shiny head Bill, I do have a shiny head, you know? And it's not because I'm bald. That's my personality shining through the top of my hairless head. Uh, You're a long-time listener, first-time caller. I was listening to try to explain the origin and meaning of Catch-22 and had to write in. Yeah, I didn't. I had never seen the movie, and I was unfamiliar. So thank you for writing in to set me straight here. In the book, the soldiers are required to complete... uh, All right, so anyway, there's the expression Catch-22 which I thought it meant damned if you do, damned if you don't. Evidently, it, 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 I think it kind of meant regardless of your response, you know, if you choose A or B, C is still happening, so it doesn't matter, but they give you the illusion of choice. I don't know. This person will explain it. In the book, the soldiers are required to complete a certain number of missions in order to be released from their duties. From what I remember, the missions are World War II bomber missions and are extremely dangerous, and the the soldiers have to complete 40 of them. If a soldier agrees to go on a mission, the soldier is labeled as clinically insane, and they are not allowed to fly because no one in their right mind would agree to go on such a dangerous mission. If you don't want to fly, then the officers agree That is the right response, and they deem the soldier sane and tell them to fly the mission. The soldier agrees to the mission and is immediately called insane again, and they ground you from flying, thus creating the paradox and inability to complete the required missions. These soldiers are never able to reach their goal, and even if someone does get close, the commanding officers raise the requirement. Well, it kind of seems like they're looking out for you. The phrase catch-22 is mentioned when the characters talk about this one catch to the rules that they have to follow in order to go home. The book was originally titled Catch-18, but the offer changed it since a different World War II novel came out around the same time with the number 18 in the title. 22 was chosen because it has a repeating number Numbers similar to repeating events that happen in the book. Love the podcast and go fuck yourself. Well, thank you very much for a very clear and well-written explanation of Catch-22. The Catch-22 I have with that is that still doesn't quite make sense to me because they actually looked out for you. I thought it was no matter what, you're going on this mission and you're going to fucking die. Seems like it went the other way. 